Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's me, the Retro Viking. Thanks so much for stopping by today. Now, I'm, I'm really kind of excited about today's episode because I'm going to be talking about one of my absolute favorite game characters of all time, and that's Donkey Kong. I love Donkey Kong so much that I even have my own arcade cabinet that I have modified to include over 60 titles of original arcade games in it, and three of them being Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr., and Donkey Kong 3. See? I, I wouldn't lie to you. There I am right there. So, today we're talking about Donkey Kong. If you already know that Donkey Kong exists for Game Boy, then this probably isn't for you. But if you're like me, I just discovered that there was a Donkey Kong title that was created for Game Boy back in 1994. I just learned this like two weeks ago. Mainly because back then, I wasn't playing mobile games. And I didn't have handhelds. My handhelds were like the Tiger Electronics, or I even had one of those little battery, like the little watch battery powered Ghostbuster games. I can't even remember what it was called. I'm sure I'll put a picture of it up on the screen right now. But uh, that's what I had. But my parents were stingy about buying batteries. So once the original batteries went dead in those things, I pretty much never got to play them again. So I never wasted my time asking for something like a Game Boy because I knew I wasn't going to get it. It wasn't until in recent years that I started going back and collecting handhelds retroactively. It wasn't until a couple of weeks ago I discovered that Donkey Kong existed on the Game Boy. And it wasn't just a port of the arcade game. Shigeru Miyamoto himself actually designed this game, and it was the last Donkey Kong title he worked on before Nintendo handed the license over to Rare, and they created games like Donkey Kong Country and its subsequent sequels. So this was the last one that Donkey Kong's creator worked on. And like I said, it's not just a port. Sure, the first couple of levels, well, you're going to see, because we're going to play the game and we're going to go through it a little bit. But the first couple of levels... Those are indeed like recreations of the arcade game. But once you get past level three, it opens up into a whole new game. It's, it's the same style of game, but with all new levels that were never in the arcade. Miyamoto really went all out with this one, and it is a fantastic member of the Donkey Kong family. So if you've never seen it, strap in because we're about to get to it. Okay, so I promise that I'm not going to talk through this entire thing. I'm only gonna interject when there's a new mechanic or something specific that I wanna point out. So I'm gonna let this play. Just remember the first three to four, I think it's the first four levels are basically parts of the arcade. And then we're gonna go from there. So I'll be back to chat with you in a couple of minutes. Thank you. 
Okay, now's where the game is gonna branch off and start to become a whole new game. Donkey Kong continues to kidnap Pauline and runs off with her, and you chase after with Mario. And now, this is where we're going to also introduce new game mechanics. Now, if you've played the American, or sorry, North American, I think European version of Super Mario Brothers 2, not the one that became the Lost Levels, but Super Mario, the original Super Mario 2 here in North America, you're familiar that Mario has a mechanic in that game where he can pick up root vegetables and enemies and throw them. Well, that is also in this game. Another new feature that Mario can do in this game is his ability to jump higher with a backflip. Now, most of you will probably remember this being introduced in Mario 64 on the Nintendo 64 system. However, that was not where Mario first was able to do it. Miyamoto added it as a new mechanic, the new ability for Mario first, right there in this game. Donkey Kong on the Game Boy is where his super backflip made its debut. Okay, another familiar Miyamoto trick is in this game, there are eight different stages for each level. And every four levels, or four stages, I guess, you have a boss battle. So you're gonna face Donkey Kong himself twice in each world. This is the first one in world one. And it's basically just get to Pauline as quickly as you can, Donkey Kong is going to jump up and crash down, and if you're touching a surface when he makes contact, you're going to be stun locked for a little bit. So you can avoid that by jumping for when he lands. Okay, four levels down, time for a new mechanic. For the next four levels, there are gonna be buttons within each stage that have arrows on them going either left or right or up and down. These are used to make temporary platforms and ladders. When you click one of them, you have to place wherever you want your platform or ladder. If it's up and down, it's for a ladder. If it's side to side, it's for a platform. 
and you have to place them in an unobstructed area, and then they're temporary. After a few seconds, they will disappear, so you have to be able to place them and get across them or up and down them quickly. Another neat little thing you may have noticed is the items that are put about each stage. There's usually three of them, plus a one, some of them have one-ups in there as well. Just like in the original Donkey Kong, these are Pauline's items that you can collect. However, what's different is in this game, if you collect all three in a stage, at the end of the stage, you get a bonus mini game where you can try to win more lives. In many of these stages, the fox fires are going to roam around the map, up and down the walls in a circle. So the challenge is placing your ladders and platforms in a way that they aren't going to come in contact with you when you're vulnerable when you're climbing up and down a ladder. Interestingly, in this game, unlike the original Donkey Kong, when you fall from a great height, you don't die, you instead get stunned briefly. It's usually harmless, but if there's a patrolling enemy in that area, it could end up being fatal, so just be careful. And here we go with our final showdown with Donkey Kong in stage one. Now, it actually took me a minute to figure this one out the very first time I played it because I'm so used to avoiding the barrels and just platforming that when I got to the top, I didn't know what to do. It took me a second to realize you have to pick up three of the barrels and throw them at Donkey Kong in order to finish the level and move on. So, we think we rescue Pauline, but no, away she goes again, and the game continues on. Okay guys, that was Donkey Kong for the Game Boy. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm enjoying the heck out of it. I still haven't finished it. And I don't know if I ever will. If you haven't tried it, it's still out there. You can find it. I got this one for under $30. So it's, uh, it's definitely out there if you know where to look. Now, some straight talk for a minute. I'm not one of those guys that has a channel that has to constantly feel like I remind you to please like and subscribe and all that stuff. I never wanted to pressure my audience to feel that they had to do that. To me, as a YouTube viewer myself, I always found it kind of annoying when channels seemed like they were begging for subscriptions. 
this is going to be one of the first times that I'm actually asking that if you please enjoyed this content, that please remember to click that subscribe button down below, click the bell so you can get notifications. And if you can, please click like and even leave me a comment. And if it's at all possible, even share this video with people that you know would also appreciate it. I'm asking you this for the first time because I really love making these videos, but at the same time, I kind of feel like maybe my audience doesn't enjoy them as much as I enjoy making them. So if you don't want to see this content anymore, then that's fine too. And I'll just stop producing it. But I need to know that you want to see this kind of stuff. And I, the best way for me to know that is to drop me a comment down below, click that like button, share this with your friends so that they can see it and come on board too. Because if I don't start to see some more of that, then I'm going to take that to mean that I'm only making these for myself. So I hate to pressure you. I don't want to feel like I'm guilting you into doing it, but if you want to keep the channel going, then I need to hear from you. So if you've made it this far, Thanks so much for watching, and hopefully we'll see you again next time.